Tennis is a game of errors. Even at the professional level, 70% of points end with somebody just missing a shot. And for mere mortals like us, the percentages tend to be even higher. So if you want to be more successful at tennis, the bottom line is really simple. You need to make your opponents miss more. And depending on where you aim, you can absolutely cause that to happen. Every time you step on the court, based on where you aim, you can cause your opponents to miss more or make more shots depending on what targets you choose. And a lot of times those good targets are hiding in plain sight, which is exactly what I'm gonna be talking about in this lesson. So let's dive right in. Let's talk about where to aim to draw more errors out of your opponents. Check out this point. This is Daniel Medvedev versus Novak Djokovic at this year's Australian Open 2001, which by the way, there were 71% of the points in this match ended with one of them making a mistake. And these are two players that we typically consider as being shot tolerance kind of players. Like they're very consistent, they miss very rarely. So why did this error happen from Novak? Well. Novak does a nice job of just recovering here, so does Medvedev, and then they get into this cross-court rally on the, the ad side. And I want you to look at this decision right here that Novak makes to hit down the line. When he chooses to make this shot, and the ball goes down the line, and Medvedev gets ready to hit a forehand, I want you to look at Novak's position right as contact is being made. Now, I don't have time to get into all the specifics and the, the nitty-gritty of the geometry in this lesson, but if you know tennis, then you know that your positioning should not be back to the middle after you hit a ground stroke. You know that you wanna be a little bit on the other side of the court from where the ball is. So rather than put yourself literally in the middle, because Novak just hit a ball to the left side of the court, he should be positioned a little bit on the right. And where is he instead? He's on the left side. So. Medvedev, understanding this, realizing this, trust me, he's aware of this dynamic, even though many players watching at home are not, he just hits a very routine but solid cross-court shot, and that's what puts Novak in this position here. Sure, we see Novak in this position all the time, but if he could choose to be in a balanced, comfortable, upright position, or this one, he would never choose this one. He's going to make more mistakes when he's in this type of position, sliding across uh, the hard court, trying to hit however good of a forehand he can hit. I mean, look at this. He misses this shot by you know, solid 10, 15 feet. And it's critical to understand that there was a reason behind this error. He didn't just miss the shot. He left himself exposed and Medvedev took advantage of it. And you can do that at home too. Here's another example that highlights kind of a similar dynamic, which is super important for you at home when you play your matches. Watch this point unfold, couple cross court shots, Medvedev just staying solid, cross court, and then eventually Novak changes the direction, changes the direction again, changes the direction again, and now he's starting to get a little bit of trouble. You can kind of sense how his position starts to get a little bit tougher, a little bit tougher, a little bit tougher, and Novak won this match, just to be clear, like going down the line isn't always the wrong shot. But when you do go down the line, you have to make sure that you hurt your opponent. So when Novak starts to hit these down the line shots and he starts to stack these down the line shots and he hits down the line shot after down the line shot, this is the one that ultimately kind of seals his fate in this particular rally. Novak, just like in our previous example, kind of stretched off balance, totally off the court, and remember that rule of thumb. Anytime you hit the, the ball to this side of the court, your position on the next shot needs to be over on the other side of the court. And so watch what happens here. As Medvedev reaches the ball, Novak is just barely inside the singles court. He still has a foot outside the singles court. And cross court is the easiest, safest, most high percentage shot that Medvedev could possibly aim for. And that's exactly what's exposed. So the rule of thumb here, here's your takeaway. Please pay close attention to this. The next time you play a tennis match, anytime your opponent hits down the line, there should be alarm bells going off in your head. You should be saying to yourself, they just gave me an opportunity. On the other hand, if you wanna hit down the line, that's fine. Just make sure you hurt your opponent. The mistake Novak made here wasn't necessarily going down the line. It was going down the line and not significantly hurting Medvedev. And so there's a double whammy happening here. There's a cross-court ball, which is safe, 
going to the other side of the court where Novak was not. And Medvedev is relatively, you know, balanced and in control. So your takeaway is anytime your opponent hits down the line, look for the cross court opportunity. There's probably one there for the taking, which will stress them, put them under pressure, and you'll get more errors from your opponent. Here's another point from that same match that at first glance might just seem like a, like a nothing miss. Just watch this play out really quick. Novak hits what seems to be a pretty solid return. Medvedev kind of stretches him a little bit. Novak misses. Next time you watch a professional tennis match, do me a favor and watch it through this lens of errors or misses and kind of be a little bit of a detective. Take out your, your magnifying glass. Anytime a professional player, especially somebody who makes a lot of their money and makes a lot of their wins by being super steady, Novak obviously has weapons. Like he, he's got big shots that he can hurt you with. But more than anything, he's an incredible counterpuncher and just very rarely misses for no reason. So anytime he makes an error like this, you should be paying attention, especially since it's probably something you can copy. Blasting a 100 mile an hour forehand, probably not something you can copy, not something I can copy and be successful. These are the types of patterns you should be, you should be paying close attention to. So here's what happened when Novak attacked on this return of serve and hit a solid ball across courts. The ball got to Medvedev before Novak could even get inside the singles courts. The ball is on the racket of Daniil right now, and look at Novak's position. Uh-oh. He, he's in the alley, and the ball is already on top of Medvedev. So this presents an opportunity, and this is, again, the, here's your kind of big takeaway. You should be looking for opportunities to go down the line when your opponent is off balance, when they've been hurt when they're kind of struggling with their position. And that's 100% the case here with Novak. He's not even close to the position he should be. His position ideally probably should be somewhere around here in an ideal world that obviously doesn't always work out that way. But this is a massive gap between where, you know, ideally he should be and where he actually is. And that opens up the opportunity for Medvedev. Notice here, Medvedev, again, doesn't just crush this ball and, and smash it. Yeah, he hits it solid, but he's not trying to just hit an outright winner. And this is key. This is a forced error by Medvedev. He gets Novak stretched, makes him uncomfortable. Again, Novak misses this by like 10, you know, plus feet. You know, he didn't just miss this for no reason. Medvedev pressured him and stressed him with a ball that was well inside the lines. Look at where this ball bounces. I mean, it's about as textbook as possible. It's probably five, six feet away from the sideline, probably five, six feet away from the, from the baseline. Because of our perspective, it looks a little bit shorter, but tons of space here. And he draws an error from one of the most steady and consistent players in the history of tennis. So huge key here, and you should be looking for this in your very next match. Another example here that highlights the importance of going down the line at the right time. Novak again with a strong cross court return, but a very different setup on this one. And he's able to draw the error on Medvedev, who again, super steady, consistent player. The reason why he decides to take the higher risk on this particular shot is because everything sets up in a favorable position for Novak. He kind of sits in this corner after the return of serve and anticipates this cross-court backhand, which Medvedev hit tons of during this match. And so Novak catches his balance, pushes himself into the corner to hit a forehand instead of a backhand. And you'll notice here that Medvedev actually gets to exactly the right spot when Novak hits. Medvedev is just offset a little bit on the other side of the court. And so he's in a good position, but Novak feels like because he's stepping a little bit inside the court, because it's an inside forehand, because it is his forehand, which he hits more winners with than his backhand, he's feeling like now is the chance to target that down the line shot. So because everything stacked in his favor, going down the line here produced the error. Whereas earlier in the lesson, you saw how going down the line, going down the line at the wrong, wrong time gave the error opportunity to the opponent. So it's a double-edged sword. Picking the right target at the right time can give you tons of mistakes from your opponents. And that's how you can win matches much, much easier. Not trying to smash you know, winners on the line. These players are super smart. They're doing these patterns. They're picking these targets on purpose. And hopefully now you know exactly how to do that too. 
If that excites you, if this has been helpful, do me a favor and click the like button. And I want you to go put this in the practice in your very next match. And if you get the chance to do that, please come back and just leave me a comment down below. Let me know how it worked for you. The best players in the world are using these patterns to draw errors from, your, from their opponents, and you can do the exact same thing. This is just the first video in the series focused on drawing errors from your opponents. Video two is gonna be all about positioning, where to put yourself so that your opponents make more errors. So subscribe so you don't miss that, or if it's already been published, you can just click it right over here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in that next video.